When good games come around, we always want more of them. At least that's what I think, but a sequel isn't always a great thing. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 worst sequels in video games. Starting off with number 10 is Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and say that I think Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 is the worst game that's ever happened or anything like that. If you like the original Force Unleashed, the second is fun. I mean, it's a lot more repetitive, and considering it's also a lot shorter, those are big problems. I personally enjoy both games, however, I do not take the second game seriously. And like Magicians, if it were to demand to be taken seriously, it would be kind of a joke. Sorry, Magicians out there, just wanted to make an Arrested Development reference. Let's just be clear, the story kinda sucks, and I'm gonna spoil it a little bit. It's never really clear whether you're a clone or whether you're being lied to about being a clone. And it could have easily been used as a twist either way, and never was. It felt too much like they just pressed the reset button on the first game and gave you another game that was the same except for much shorter, much more repetitive, and a story that makes itself stranger without making any attempt at justifying itself. And the game almost ends with an eh, whatever. So while I will admit I, I probably will play that game again just out of mindless fun, if you actually intellectually examine it, it kinda sucks, especially compared to the first. Moving on to number 9 is Drive 3R, or Driver 3, or just Driver, or something. I don't really know how to say it, that's how bad it is. Don't replace your damn letters with numbers. Don't do it, I don't care if it's the third one, don't do it. Now, there is a dedicated base of people who definitely like Drive 3R, but I am not one of those people. I apologize to those people for the savaging I'm about to give this game. This game, whereas Driver 1 and 2 at least are kind of different from Grand Theft Auto because there wasn't a 3D Grand Theft Auto when they came out, in the first driver, you can't even get out of the car. The second driver, you can only get out of the car when the cops aren't chasing you. But Drive 3R, and yes, at this point, I'm saying that specifically to make fun of the name of the game. In Drive 3R, it's Grand Theft Auto. What happened with Driver 1 and 2 were these games that had sprawling stories and very specific missions, and then with Drive 3R, you basically had a pale imitation of Grand Theft Auto 3. The shooting mechanics were dull, the driving mechanics weren't given the attention they should have had given it was a game called Driver 3, sorry, Drive 3R. It's just kind of an embarrassing game that, that started the downfall of the franchise as a whole anyways. At number 8 is Medal of Honor Warfighter. Now let's just go ahead and say this, Medal of Honor was a franchise that really helped popularize the military shooter. Among the real OGs, one might say. And Warfighter was just kind of, well, a tired military shooter. Tons of them had come out, and it didn't really do anything to set itself apart. It didn't have a great campaign at all. To be more specific with my problems with it, it seemed like it was never really able to strike a balance between two things that the developers clearly liked both of, which was not only arcade stuff, but also realism. To give an example, in multiplayer, you had a little bit more of the slower paced, realism oriented gameplay, and yet you also had things like killstreaks, which is just fundamentally incompatible with a slower pace. For both mechanical reasons and the repetition of the genre, the game really just wasn't anything special, and it didn't really accomplish what it set out to do. Which again, for one of the OGs of that genre, sucks. And at number 7 is Need for Speed Payback, which let's just say of this game, a swing and a miss. Need for Speed Payback kind of tries to be Fast and the Furious, and it doesn't fail in every respect. It even gives us some interesting mid-mission character swapping mechanics for heists, which actually work really well. However, oof, that story, ugh. It's pretty standard. I'm not going to say it's horrible or anything, but it's executed very badly. Character animation, voice acting, these are not things to laud about this game. If you went back to the reviews, I'd be willing to bet you couldn't find a single one praising either of those aspects of it. Payback really goes for a cinematic feel, and it's really to its downfall. It tries really hard to give you a stylized cinematic of almost anything that would just be cool to happen in-game. Like you're about to hit a jump, oh, cinematic. I don't know what they were thinking with that personally, and while Need for Speed Heat was obviously a step in the right direction, they've got a long way to go to recover from Need for Speed Payback. 
And number six is Postal 3, which at least they didn't try to replace any letters with the number three. However, it doesn't matter, it's a very bad game. However, it at least has an excuse. The developers claim the reason it's bad is because they thought they were outsourcing it to a company that had resources that outweighed their own. Then the economic downturn of 2007-2008 basically kneecapped them. It also made the developers vow that they would never outsource Postal again. What are some of the things that suck about it? Well, aiming, which is, in all honesty, not a problem in Postal or Postal 2. It's very strange in this game. You also can't free roam while you're playing story mode. NPCs don't really do anything. You can't jump. I mean, there's a reason why they decided to go early access with the new one, and they've been doing a great job with it. I think they just want to take it slow and give the best game possible after the last one, because even in the Steam description, they have an FAQ, and one of the questions is, is this going to suck like the last one? And they say, no, it's not. At number five is Bomberman Act Zero. We could talk about Bomberman Act Zero literally for hours. If you wanted to discuss in detail what is wrong with it, you could for a long time. The gameplay is, mm, it's Bomberman, but nothing else is. Also, every single stage looks the same. I mean, they use the same textures. It just doesn't ever feel like anything happens. But I don't understand why you would do this with Bomberman. I don't know what's going through your head that's like, I'll take this goofy little classic competitive multiplayer game and make this. I don't know. I've tried for years to figure out what went through these developers' heads. And it clearly wasn't, uh, we're going to make the best Bomberman game possible because it doesn't feel like they even tried. Instead of going into deep detail about it, really the best thing to do is just say, what the hell were they thinking? Hey, it's got a crappy soundtrack. The AI is horrifically unbalanced. In a game like this, collision detection matters, but not to these developers, apparently. And oh yeah, the loading times are unbearable. Nothing went right, and it looks like this. What? At number four is GoldenEye Rogue Agent, which is not a sequel to the game or movie GoldenEye. It's that you're a rogue MI6 agent who accidentally quote-unquote kills James Bond, and also you have a golden ocular implant. A golden eye. <sighs> I mean, on some level, it's creative, the distance they traveled to be able to say the word golden eye again, and a large portion of the game's actually not terrible sales had to have depended on the fact it was literally called GoldenEye, as if it were a sequel to GoldenEye. But A, it's not a good game, and B, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know why you make a James Bond game where you don't play as James Bond. In fact, you supposedly kill James Bond. <laughs> like what? What's the point? Make something else. Well, you know the point is to cash in on the success of the James Bond franchise, and particularly the success of the game GoldenEye, which frankly set a ton of standards for the first-person shooter genre, but you know how it goes. At number three is Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which, why is his nose square? Did he lose part of it? Did they chop off the round top of it? Come on, Rare. Why is his nose square? All right, enough of that. Why did they do this to Banjo-Kazooie? They added so many mechanics and so many of them don't do enough to be there. I'm not saying that the ideas were bad because they actually were pretty good. A lot of people credit Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts with sort of inspiring ideas that Kerbal Space Program or even Fallout 4 may have actually indulged in later. But so much of this game relies on mechanics that are just not pleasurable. It's just too complicated and these ideas are too new for a Banjo-Kazooie, a mascot platformer that shouldn't be too hard to screw up. Also, his nose. Seriously, what is up with that? The hair would be a complaint too, I'm not gonna lie. That hair makes me think he's gonna break out in one of the songs from Greece at any moment. But every time I think about this game, it's just, what, wh why, what did you do that for? At number two is Dynasty Warriors 9. Hey, remember when I did the before you buy for Dynasty Warriors 9 and I was very unimpressed to say the nicest word I can think of? I mean, here's the thing. The premise sounds good. 
open world Dynasty Warriors. Part of the reason Dynasty Warriors is so great is these environments where you have these mass amounts of people attacking you at any given time. Well, hey, doesn't translate like you might think, or perhaps was just no effort put into it. I don't know. Who cares? It went bad. Dynasty Warriors 8 was just a great version of Dynasty Warriors. They added new things to it without screwing it up in any way, and it was just this endless barrage of fun, whereas Dynasty Warriors 9 is not. I don't know how somebody could be entertained by this game the entire time they're playing it. Battles are still fun, like I'm not gonna say that they're bad or anything, but there's so much downtime. And it's just this basically empty open world full of just shrubbery, basically. It's probably the only game on here I actually genuinely just hate. It sounds like it could work and then it doesn't just not work. It clearly doesn't value your time or intelligence as a video game player. And at number one, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. I, I, I don't know if I need to tell you that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 is bad, but it is. It's so bad. It's so, so bad. It looks several generations old. Like if there was a PlayStation 2 game with particularly good character models, that's what this looks like. Everything about it sucks though. The hub world sucks. It doesn't go anywhere and doesn't feel like a real thing. It's almost like it just forgets that it's a Tony Hawk game because it's not hard to figure out what to do to make a Tony Hawk game that's good. They change things like how the special meter works in ways that just make literally zero sense. I probably don't hate it as badly as Dynasty Warriors 9 because I didn't really expect Tony Hawk 5 to be good. It didn't have some like amazing promise about it. It was just the fact that they were making another Tony Hawk. But even that being said, this is a bad game. And then a quick bonus for you in Duke Nukem Forever. We've talked about this game so many times at this point, and there's not really to give you an in-depth explanation as to why it's such a disappointing game. But it is. After years of development hell, it's a really disappointing game. But what do you think? What are some of the worst sequels you can remember? Are they on this list? I'm willing to bet that yes, at least some are. But if you have other thoughts, make sure and leave them in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. So click subscribe and don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.